Estamos de volta para mais uma parte da nossa conferência, Portugal na vanguarda do hidrogênio na Europa. Agora temos connosco Marcus Guzman, é Chief Strategy Officer da empresa alemã Hydrogenius. Um, já ouvimos das empresas nacionais, das empresas portuguesas, agora vamos ouvir uma empresa uma empresa estrangeira, uma empresa alemã, que desenvolveu precisamente uma, uma forma de, de armazenar e de transportar hidrogênio, uh, está também a, a desenvolver uma parceria uh, com, com Espanha, uh, neste caso, uh, uh, já nos disseram também que estão interessados em Portugal, no projeto Âncora de Cines, e portanto uh, vamos conversar com o Marcos Gasman para conhecer um, a estratégia da Hydrogenius para o hidrogênio. Hello, Marcus. Welcome to our conference. Hello, thank you very much for the invitation for that discussion. Hello, welcome. Uh, so, uh, I will start uh, by asking you to, to, to introduce a little bit uh, your company, Hydro, Hydrogenius. Um, we know it's German and that has a, a technology uh, of, uh, of um, transporting and, uh, and, uh, and um, storage hydrogen. So what can you, can you tell us uh, that, that you do, that, that you are developing? Yeah, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to introduce the company Hydrogenius LOHC Technologies on a proper basis. Actually, our company has been established as a spin-off from University of Erlangen in the year 2013. And the original idea was to store hydrogen in an organic carrier molecule. That's uh, where the term LOHC derives from. LOHC means liquid organic hydrogen carrier molecule. And um, yeah, that uh, idea has uh, been further developed and materialized. Uh, as I said, the company was formed in 2013 and since then has been growing significantly in terms of experience, in terms of number of employees. So we are now uh, still a sort of startup, still financed. Uh, however, we are already pretty well grown up uh, with about 100 employees in uh, various sectors, business development, technology development and so on. Um, and we also have established a number of strategic partnerships with uh, global players in the market uh, on the environment of hydrogen. Um, the uh, technology itself uh, that we have developed uh, is, uh, let's say, transferring the gaseous hydrogen molecule into a liquid form, which uh, then can be transported in a very safe way using the existing infrastructure. So um, thinking about uh, um, transportation of the hydrogen by means of uh, vessels, so ships uh, from harbor to harbor, um, rail tanks, uh, even truck, uh, uh, trucks on the road. So um, that's a significant advantage. Um, and uh, the reason is that, that the product actually, um, which results from the, what we call hydrogenation of the organic hydrogen carrier molecule with the hydrogen molecule, results in that liquid form, which, which behaves like, like diesel, for instance. However, it's not flammable. You don't have to cool it um, compared to cryogenic hydrogen, which is close to zero Kelvin temperature, so extremely cold. Uh, we don't have to compress it. Uh, we can literally cake, carry it in an open glass from A to B uh, without losing any of the hydrogen, which is then going to be released at the use point. Uh, it can be stored uh, safely and from that perspective provides very significant advantages. Uh, we are now in the process of commercializing or industrializing um, our technology at a larger scale. So uh, we are right now close to the FID of five tons per day hydrogen storage uh, facility in, uh, in Germany and also a release unit of 1.5 tons per day, which is going to be uh, executed uh, in Rotterdam, uh, which anyway is uh, supposed to become a major player in terms of importing hydrogen in future. So this uh, step into industrialization is, uh, uh, I think, a very, um, very interesting point in the history of the company. And uh, um, what, uh, what really um, is, is very positive is uh, that uh, we are considered now as the main technology provider for 
a number of European international projects or even uh, yeah, outside the European Union, we are considered as, uh, as a solid partner to provide a robust solution to enable a hydrogen infrastructure. And, and uh, so that we can understand, for instance, for Portugal, uh, hydrogen is, is important because we, can, we have the, 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 um, the natural conditions to produce it and to export it to the, to the north of Europe. And for, for countries like Germany and Holland, uh, what is the importance of, uh, of hydrogen so that we can, uh, we can, our audience can understand uh, the importance of this, of this gas uh, there? Yeah, I think uh, it all derives from the uh, very strong ambition of not just Germany, but uh, this applies to throughout Europe, uh, any country. Uh, the ambition to decarbonize uh, society, to reduce the CO2 footprint of the industry, to reduce the CO2 footprint of the mobility sector and, and others. So uh, that actually triggers uh, um, the question, where should alternative energy supply sources derive from? And hydrogen has been identified as a main uh, carrier um, for energy that could be transported or imported. Um, hydrogen or renewable energy generation in general, of course, is also possible in Germany. Uh, however, it's uh, relatively limited in terms of scalability, uh, which already, let's say, uh, resulted in, uh, in this uh, statement even of the German government, and you find that in the German national hydrogen strategy, that the government already expects that in year 2030, about 80% of the hydrogen needs to be imported. So the question remains, what is efficient transport mode to import it on the one hand side? And the second question, or maybe that's even the first question, where to source the hydrogen from? And I think uh, to look at regions where you have a higher solar efficiency, where you have uh, access to cheap wind uh, energy, um, I think that's a, a major decision point uh, that needs to be taken where to actually uh, source the hydrogen from and then to build the bridge from the source point to the use point, which is actually Germany or the Netherlands or other countries. And uh, you are already uh, teaming up uh, with, uh, with, uh, with other countries. You are present in the former Green Spider, now Green Crane, a project that is with, with Spain um, and that, that is based on the, on the logic of uh, producing green hydrogen in Spain and then sending it with your, with your storage technology uh, to the port of Rotterdam and then uh, to, to, to Germany. Can you, can you explain, and, and it's, it's, it's going to be um, a candidate to the, to the, to the IPSA uh, statute of the, the European Commission. So can you tell us a bit more about, uh, about that project? What's the point of situation? Uh, if you think that it's, it, it's in a good position to, to earn the, 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 the IPSA uh, statute from, the, from Brussels? Yes, happy to provide some, some insight. Um, I mean, this is a very um, attractive project to us. It's, uh, the ambition here is to produce renewable energy by means of uh, PV, so solar energy. Um, and in, in this project, uh, to optimize the utilization of any asset in the context of hydrogen production and then transforming it into a transportable mode like LOHC. Um, this is combined also um, with a conventional power plant um, so that uh, the downstream can, let's say, operate at 24-7 basis. Um, so PV would be mainly used to produce the hydrogen by electrolyzer technology and uh, the hydrogen is going to be utilized in various uh, uh, use points also within Spain in various sectors like the mobility sector, industrial applications, heating and so on. And uh, a fraction of the hydrogen is intended to be exported uh, towards Central Europe using, as you rightly mentioned, uh, Rotterdam as a main distribution hub. 
in order to provide hydrogen to either the Netherlands or Germany. So continued uh, transportation from Rotterdam onwards. Um, project partners in that context are Enagas and uh, Fopak. Uh, Fopak, by the way, is also one of the uh, main investors into our company. And um, yeah, I think uh, it, it has some, some uh, um, very good position because uh, um, even if you think about, um, let's say, the question, what is new, what's the main differentiator to other projects like Blue Danube, so the idea of sourcing hydrogen from Romania and importing it into Austria and, and Germany, uh, where wind power is actually uh, the source of renewable energy, you may want to also ask the question, why, why are we looking at various uh, source points of, uh, of the molecule which is intended to be imported? Uh, and the, the simple answer is uh, diversification of the source points um, to find out what may be at the final picture the most advanced and uh, most advantageous, advantageous uh, supply source for the entire logistics and value chain. Um, I think we should keep it open. Um, and I think also technology-wise, uh, um, the European Union, every nation should be open to to any of the technology today, because there's a lot of momentum in the industry. There's a lot to be learned, uh, not just for the for LHC, which is our technology, but also potentially for others. And I think that's uh, that's an important an important statement that uh, um, at that point in time, um, everyone needs to walk up the learning curve uh, from the production side, from the use point, from the logistics. It's a totally new concept. It's a new industry, which is actually uh, under development right now. Spain and Romania, and uh, you, you already said that you are uh, uh, diversing your, your, your points of origin for, for hydrogen. Uh, are you looking for other countries uh, inside Europe, like Portugal, or even outside Europe? Thank you very much for asking that question. Of course, we would be highly interested to also support uh, and to play an integral role in the h 2 cnes project in uh, Portugal. Um, I think Portugal has uh, also its own advantages. So um, we are very open to support any project. Uh, we are backed by, um, by a large scale EPC contractor where we have signed in a memorandum of understanding. Uh, so we are in the position to execute a larger number of uh, projects uh, at the same time. Um, Portugal is certainly on our wish list. Secondly, um, what I would like to highlight is that we are also looking into other regions. We're looking into the Middle Eastern region, uh, which has its own challenges. But I think in order to diversify, as I said before, um, it's, it's, uh, it's the right uh, thing to do right now to ask you uh, uh, is there a value of investment for the for the green crane uh, uh, project <laughs> well actually uh, i can share details at that point in time because this is considered to be confidential however i mean what it has been published what you find uh, um, in the internet is a number of 2.25 billion euros that's the plan to be invested over the entire project but I would expect that uh, in terms of de-risking the project that it uh, may start at, uh, at, at a smaller scale, requiring less funding, requiring less capex, which was, of course will also drive the decision uh, whether this project will get through or not. Being on your wish list, as you said, uh, um, is, the, is that something that you will uh, actively pursue or is it uh, depending or, or on a memorandum of understanding being signed between Portugal and Germany? Um, I think uh, independent from any MOU to be signed between the governments, uh, I think we as a company, we are open to commit to the project and support that. We also have a strong relationship to the decision makers uh, within Germany, to the uh, providers of funding uh, schemes. Uh, as such, we can actively also to support, uh, try to support uh, the development of the project uh, and uh, yeah, try to drive it more holistically. And, and uh, for uh, 2001, uh, what, are, what are your main projects? What is on your, on your agenda uh, for, the, for the next year? Um, 
looking a little bit back to, to, to 2020 and, uh, and all this, uh, this pandemic, uh, I don't know if your business was, was uh, affected or not. Well, luckily, due to the pandemic, our business has not been uh, uh, impacted by any means. Uh, this was a, or still is a very, very busy year. Uh, we get uh, plenty of requests uh, to partner up with uh, companies on a global basis uh, to highlight uh, uh, not just European projects, but also Middle East, Australia, uh, Northern America, South America. So uh, we get global requests, uh, which of course is very encouraging. Uh, on the other side, we have to prioritize uh, and thinking ahead, thinking into the future, what will happen the next year. Um, as I mentioned before, um, one of the main objectives is to commercialize larger scale plans to industrialize, to get to uh, um, industrial scale pilots with five tons per day and uh, uh, capacity, storage capacity of hydrogen, which is already a significant milestone, which already provides also a stepping stone for, for the projects that we then ha will have ahead of us. And in parallel to that, of course, we further need to develop uh, the existing projects, uh, um, which I just mentioned uh, before. Uh, and we would be glad to also focus uh, our workforce on supporting the h 2 cns project and uh, to also contribute to the success of that one. Maybe Portugal, maybe Portugal could be on your wish list. In, absolutely, in, in absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay, um, Marcus, thank you so much for sharing for sharing with us uh, the 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 hydrogenous uh, experience and and story. Uh, I thank you so much uh, for for participating in our in our hydrogen conference and sharing uh, uh, the the story of your company. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Uh, foi mais um, uma história, um, um, uma experiência de uma empresa, um, desta vez alemã. Uh, ficamos, com, com, ficamos com a experiência de, de, de Marcus Gassman uh, e vamos continuar com mais, com, com mais partes da nossa conferência de hidrogênio. Não percam, até já. Música